summarize the pursuit of his life in this statement. The power of the gospel has not abated, nor has the great commission that Christ gave been changed. In fulfillment of the dream God put in his heart when he got saved, Gordon lived to see the transforming power of the gospel bring salvation, healing, and deliverance to multitudes in every nation of the world. What motivated me to come to CFNI was I was praying about what the Lord wanted me to do and I was just in a really dark place and I didn't. I just heard his audible voice super clear and told me to come to CFNI. I just came. My experience at CFNI has been really life changing. Um, I've become a completely new person in Christ. So take a leap of faith and the Lord's going to provide no matter what. You're a world changer. Come get trained. discipleship starts and ends with Jesus. It's not contingent on our great effort. It is the work and the plan of Jesus. You need to know how, but you must know why. Why are you fighting the fight you're fighting? Why are you pressing into the things of God? Look at these commandments. They're not the 10 suggestions of the 10 commandments.
Dennis and I welcome you to the Voice of Healing Conference tonight. Thank you for coming. We have received much already and we are anticipating the Holy Spirit to move in your life even more so in the sessions to come. It is time today to possess what Jesus died for you to have, and that is your healing. We cannot give up in hard times while we're waiting. We will stand with you tonight. Continue to confess the word over yourself. God loves me. God has a plan for me. God's eye is on me. Let's hear the special word of God for you tonight. We bless you. I am so thankful that I was raised in a Christian home with Christian parents who loved the Lord and taught me about healing ever since I'm a little child. Over and over again, they would come in and we'd pray each night, and if I had a little tummy ache, they would pray for me all the way through high school and college. So I grew up believing in the supernatural, in the deliverance, in healing. And I trust that you have received some manifestations of God's presence and understanding that He wants you to carry on this godly truth of healing. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, yes. and forever. So I bless you in Jesus' name. Take healing with you.
try that one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Welcome to Christ for the Nations. The third night of our Voice of Healing and Prophetic Conference. How are you guys? Doing well? Doing well? All right, let's stand as we enter into a time of worship. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. Okay, do we have anyone that's visiting for the first time tonight? Oh, look at that. Whoa. Awesome. Well, welcome to Christ for the Nations. We are blessed to have you guys here with us tonight, wherever you are from. We'll get into that a little later, but good to see you all. Turn around, give somebody a big smile and say, you're at the right place. With the right people. At the right time. <laughs> That's good. Come on, release, release some love. Smile. The doctor told us this morning, the joy of the Lord is our strength. It's good. <laughs> I think you're even more. <laughs> All right, let's, let's pray. Good to see you. Let's lift our hands before him tonight. We're believing God for signs, wonders, and miracles. We're believing for the kingdom of God to invade earth. Lord, as we lift you up this evening, we declare that you are our king, you are our sovereign, you are our Lord, you are our redeemer, you are our savior. We look to you tonight. Father, we say you are the source of all good things. And so we say, Lord, would you open up the heavens over Christ for the nations tonight? Lord, would you open up the heavens over this building and let your glory fall in this place? Lord, we give you tonight. We know it is not by might and it is not by power, but it is by your spirit. So we thank you for liberty in this place tonight. You have told us in your word that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So we proclaim freedom in this house, freedom upon the worship, freedom upon our hearts, freedom upon the media. Lord, everything tonight, we proclaim freedom. Father, we thank you for a spirit of jubilee in this house that we will rejoice. Lord, there will be an, 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 an unusual rejoicing tonight. We decree it. We declare it in the atmosphere. We say, let God arise in this house and let every enemy, the enemy of fear, doubt, and unbelief, anxiety, rebellion, passivity, we say, let the enemies of God flee tonight. Let sickness flee in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for revival, God, that hearts would be healed, lives would be changed. We say, come on in, Lord, and have your way. In Jesus' name, put your hands together and let's welcome the Holy Spirit as we enter into worship. We'll put a scripture on my heart here. And I, if there was ever a relevance to a psalm, it's in this day and hour. It's the psalms too. Why are the nations in an uproar? Why do the nations rage? And the peoples devise a vain thing. The kings of the earth take their stand against the rulers. And the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and his anointed one. Let us tear their fetters apart and cast apart their cords from us. So the nations are saying, God, we don't want your rule over us. We don't want your order over us. We're raging against you. And the king says, he who sits in the heavens, he laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. And he says, he'll speak to them in his anger. And therefore, in his fury. And after that, he says, ask of me, I'm going to give you the nations for an inheritance. So Jesus is the king forever. We're going to declare tonight the Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. There's no other God like him. So, Lord, we do declare tonight the Lord reigns. We declare tonight you reign, Jesus. Yeah. 
celebrate, to celebrate He reigns. Come on, declare He reigns. The Lord reigns, the Lord reigns, the Lord reigns, and we will sing and shout that He reigns, that You reign, that You reign forever, King of all. You're King.
Instead of Jesus, ask of me, and I'll give you the nations for your inheritance. And so, Lord, tonight, we pray, let your kingdom come. We pray, let your kingdom come, Lord. We say, hallowed be your name. We say, you're the desire of the nations, Jesus.
I just worship the Lord in this place. tonight, God, you're the holy and anointed one. You're the risen and you're the exalted one. There is no God like you. Holy and anointed one. All the earth sings holy. Thank you. 
begin to sing the name of Jesus all over this place and just lift up some worship. Yeah, we worship you, Jesus, beautiful one, holy and exalted one. Risen and exalted. You're the desire of the nations, oh God. You satisfy every living thing, oh God. You're my healer. What's the name of Yeshua?
Let's just lift up our hands right where we are, right where you are, and just tell him in your own words how beautiful he is to you, how wonderful he is to you. Father, we delight in you tonight, Jesus. Come on, in your own words, in your own words, just love on Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Come on, take a minute, in your own words. Father, we love you, we love you, Jesus. We love who you are, God. Love who you've been. Jesus, God. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Yes, in your, your own words. Jesus, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you. What a wonder you are. Jesus, yes, Lord God. Jesus, thank you, Lord God. Mm, love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. Love you, Jesus. Love you, Lord God. Love you. Yes, let it rise in this house. Let your praises rise. Let it rise in this house. We've come to worship you, Jesus. Come to give you all the praise, all the worship. Let's do your name. We've come to honor you, Lord God. What a wonder you are. 
What a wonder What a wonder you are Jesus Come on, just love on God. We're not rushing tonight. Tonight is Friday night. We're enjoying the presence of God. Jesus, what a wonder What a wonder you are mm. Come on, love on him, love on him Love on him The fairest of 10,000 The lily of the valleys The bright and shining morning star the ancient of days. We love you tonight, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. in this place thank you for your glory that is resting in this house tonight fill this room fill this house God thank you Jesus <laughs> it's so difficult to transition from these from moments like this we love you Jesus your hands together and give God a wonderful <laughs> praise. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, come on. We celebrate Jesus. We celebrate him. Jesus. Worship is so beautiful. This is what we were made for, right? You just know it. We, f we feel the best in worship. I love how the Bible says it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He didn't say see and taste. <laughs> oh, taste and see. Experience him. And you get a revelation of who he is. I'm so glad that we are in a house here at Christ for the Nations where worship is a value. That's why, you see, we take time to worship God. We don't rush it. 
We don't try to, like we're trying to escape out of the presence. We, we embrace the presence of God. We've learned this. We have leaders here that they encourage us to abide in the presence. We steward that here. We are so blessed. Every time I think about this, 52 years of this kind of worship in one location. What a blessing. What a heritage. What a legacy. 52 years. God has kissed this place with worship and we are so mindful of it. So thank you for coming here tonight. Thank you. We appreciate you. You may be seated. While you're sitting, just turn around and smile at someone. Can we give it up for the worship team? Thank you, guys. Thank you, Klaus. Thank you. Don't go too far. And Naomi, thank you. Thank you. All right, if you're a first-time visitor here, you raised your hand earlier. If you can stand, first-time visitor. Tonight is your first night here, your first time. Awesome, awesome. Come on, let's give them a big CFNI welcome. All right, before you guys take your seats, let's hear where you are from. Missouri. Okay, good to have you with us here, Missouri. All four of you are from Missouri? All four. Okay, thank you. You may be seated. All right, where, where are you guys from? Mesquite, right here in Texas. Welcome, welcome. Where are you guys from? Oh, the same. What town is that? I'm just kidding. Mesquite. All right. Where are you from? Oklahoma is in the house. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Where are you guys from? Decatur, Texas. All right, good. Where are you guys from? Arlington, Texas. Whoa, amazing. And all the way at the back, where are you from? <laughs> First time at CFNI right here in the hood in Oak Cliff. Welcome, welcome, welcome near, very far, but you're here tonight. Thank you so much. Is that it? Okay, where are you from? All the way from California. Welcome to the big T. Welcome to Texas. Where are you from? Whoa, Sheffield, England. All the way from the UK. Welcome, welcome. All right, we have family and friends here tonight, it seems. Where are you from? Miami, Florida. Awesome, awesome. All right, is that it? Oh, the grand finale. Where are you from? Indiana. Indiana. All right, awesome. Okay, do we have anyone from out, from out of the country? I have some lovely, don't go there. <laughs> anyone from out of the country, where are you from? Where are you from? Oh, yes, you did say that earlier. Come on. Okay, come on and get this. Anyone from another country? <laughs> you need prayers tonight. You're not getting this shirt. <laughs> okay. We have some lovely merch here. So we're just blessing some of our guests. Look at this. Healed. And it says, by the blood. Come on, somebody. This looks good. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. All right, do we have anyone in here who is over 80 years old? Over 80? Anyone over 80? Anyone over 70? All right, come on, come on. <laughs> this says healed, healed. Huh? Oh, they said give you another color because you have the same color, right? <laughs> What if she likes that color? <laughs> All right, let's see what this one says. Jesus heals. Okay, there's another one. All right, come, come on, come on, come on. No, he's going to get the pink shirt. Is this pink? What is this? <laughs> it's red? Okay, God bless you. Thank you so much. All right, anyone from continental Africa? Let me bless you with this bag. You are from? Yes. Please come on and get this, come on. 
says the voice of healing. We're just blessing you guys, all right? We have been blessed to be a blessing. Good to see you. All right, so just to give you a few announcements, tomorrow morning, say tomorrow morning. We will begin at 9.30 a.m. promptly in here. And we're going to have the guest speaker who is for tonight. Nathan Morris will be here tomorrow morning at 9.30. So whatever you do, please ensure that you are here at 9.30. We will also have ministry to the kids. We are teaching them how to pray for people, how to cast out spirits too. Hello, the Holy Spirit is not a small spirit, right? <laughs> Okay, so 9.30 tomorrow, we're going to do that with the kids. So please ensure that you remember those two things. Also, in the lobby area, we have our merch table. So before you leave tonight or tomorrow while you're here, please ensure you get a gift so you can bring home to your friend, to your grandma, your cousin, your aunt, somebody in your house. Be a blessing. You have been blessed while you're here. So be a blessing to someone. If you want to learn about this school, you are here, probably you don't even know, this is also a school. It's a missions organization, but there's a school here. It's a Bible school. It's Christ for the Nations. If you want to be trained, to be equipped, to be empowered in the Word, to be a world changer for Jesus, you're at the right place. So there's a booth out there where you can learn more about CFNI. We would love to have you guys as a student, right? How many of you want to be a student here? Look at that. All right. So go to the table and go sign up so we can have you guys here. All right. I'm going to invite Dr. Edith Prakash to come and she will be doing the offering. But while she's coming, can you give it up for our leaders here, Dr. Lindsay and Ms. Ginger and the staff? Let's give it up for these wonderful leaders. Thank you so much. Everybody's happy tonight? Are you enjoying the meeting so far? You know, I got a text today, I was so happy. There was a person who wrote, sent me an email, uh, a text on Facebook and said he was sitting right there and he was almost about to give up his faith. And when he heard the word of God, God transformed his life around and he got delivered, set free, and he wanted to serve God as a missionary. Isn't that amazing? And another person from Canada, I know she's there. She was just fully shivering under the power of God and she was completely healed. What an amazing, awesome God we have. You all listen. When we go to doctor, we give them copay, right? But Jesus has completely healed so many people here. And tonight, let's give Jesus a sacrificial thanksgiving offering to him. Also, I wanna share a story that happened in my life. Um, it was, I was in Regent, I mean, I was speaking in a Regent University and after the meeting was over, a man came to me and asked for prayer. And he was from Kenya. And I was earnestly saying, what can I pray for you? He said, I need a car. So I was like praying, Lord, give him a car. And the Holy Spirit said, you have three in your driveway. Why do you want me to give him? I said, well, it's not my car. It's my husband's car. So why don't you talk to him, Lord? And that night, I said to my husband on the way home, honey, I, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. I think you should give your car to this pastor. Normally he will say, no, you were just sleeping. But that day, he said, all right, tell him to bring, to come tomorrow, I'll give the car key, and he gave the car key. And so I had my car, but he had given his car. So anyway, what happened, long story short, one time during COVID, a grandma was very sick and she was dying, and her daughter called me to pray for her, and so I went, me and my son went three o'clock in the morning to that house and stayed with her and prayed with her, and she died. And um, uh, I was there with her till 10 o'clock in the morning. And after they took the dead body, I came home. And at that time, my, da my daughter had just got accepted to William and Mary, and she was going to study pre-med. Pre and so this lady's daughter wasn't married. And so she was going, leaving town and going away to Arizona. So she called me and said, does your daughter have a car? I said, no, we are going to buy a car. She said, don't buy a car, I'm going to come see you. She came to my house and gave us a brand new Volvo. You know, if you want God to bless you, many times when God tells you to give, it's only because he's making room for better things to come in your life. So tonight, pray and ask God, Lord, what do you want me to give today? You know, in Genesis chapter 18, we read about a beautiful story about Abraham. Abraham is, you know, sitting outside his house. It's a beautiful afternoon. He's resting and he sees three men coming towards his house. He runs to them, he bows down, he invites them, and he says, please come into my house and eat something to, have something to eat, and then leave. 
So they come into his house and he serves them without expecting anything in return. He gives them a steak, he gives them yogurt, he stands there and he does everything he can to make their time hospitable and wonderful. When they leave, the three men said to Abraham, one of them said to Abraham, next year when I come back, your wife will have a son. Did Abraham ask for it? No. When you serve without expecting, when you give without expecting, God will bless you without asking. So many of us have needs today, but even without asking, God is gonna bless you. And so they pray and ask, Lord, what should I sow into this organization? This is such an amazing organization. Through CFNI, so many pastors, evangelists are rocking the world. In fact, today I was talking to him, thousands and thousands of churches they have built in the world. You know, when we sow into Christ for the nation, it's a fertile soil. And it's going out there to preach the gospel of Jesus, help pastors, missionaries, orphans, digging wells, building churches. So it's an honor for us to sow. And also tonight, it's a very big treat that we have. Here's the latest book of Dr. Dennis Lindsay, Jehovah Sneaky. And it's an amazing book because it talks about the faithfulness of God. You know, when the children of Israelites were crossing Jordan, God said to them, when you cross over, I want you to put pillars of stones. Because when the next generation comes, I want them to know the miracles that I've done for you. Look at all these pillars. These are the pillars that they have learned from their parents and they wanna transfer it to the next generation. So if you want your faith to arise, what God did in the past, he can do it again. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And those who sow an offering of $50, this is book will be given to you as a donation. And if you wanna give $100, you can get this book and a Christ for the Nation Bible. You can go to the, uh, that lounge and they can give it that to you. But I'm believing God that are people here who can sow at $10,000 or maybe $50,000. You know why? The apartments need renovation. There are so much to be done in Christ for the Nation. Um, in fact, yesterday I was standing in that green room and I, I stepped on some you know, a bubble and it burst and there was water all over. So we need a lot of renovation miracles, y'all. It's a very fertile soil, so pray about it. Shall we pray for a moment? Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace. Lord, I ask you tonight, Christ for the nation is your college. It is here for your glory. Lord, this place that's an open heaven and there's a manifest presence. And Lord, I pray tonight that you will speak into the hearts of people, not just an offering, Lord, but people will come forward to say, I will renovate this building for you. I will sponsor an international student. I will pay for a church in the native program. But whatever it is, Lord, I pray that you will speak to the hearts of people that tonight we will have the biggest miracle of all the three days. And Holy Spirit, we wanna thank you for the many, many, many miracles that you've done the past three days. Lord, we thank you for the anointing and we thank you for the fire of the Holy Ghost that has set so many people free. God, we are so humbled and we are honored for your supernatural presence. And Lord, we thank you for Nathan Morris tonight. And Lord, we are looking forward to all that you will do tonight. And we say, Holy Spirit, come. And Lord, give us revelations that will revolutionize our lives. Lord, we thank you for your glory in this place. We give you all the honor, all the power, all the majesty belong to you and you alone. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, thank you. Heart of the press, say heart of the press. Right, 50% off on all t-shirts and cups. So, <laughs> so get something for your family or your friend. 50% off all t-shirts and cups. Media, can you go ahead and play those videos? Thank you so much. Dennis and I welcome you to the Voice of Healing Conference tonight. Thank you for coming. We have received much already and we are anticipating the Holy Spirit to move in your life even more so in the sessions to come. 
It is time today to possess what Jesus died for you to have, and that is your healing. We cannot give up in hard times while we're waiting. We will stand with you tonight. Continue to confess the word over yourself. God loves me. God has a plan for me. God's eye is on me. Let's hear the special word of God for you tonight. We bless you. I am so thankful that I was raised in a Christian home with Christian parents who loved the Lord and taught me about healing ever since I'm a little child. Over and over again, they would come in and we'd pray each night, and if I had a little tummy ache, they would pray for me all the way through high school and college. So I grew up believing in the supernatural, in the deliverance, in healing. And I trust that you have received some manifestations of God's presence and understanding that He wants you to carry on this godly truth of healing. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, yes. and forever. So I bless you in Jesus' name. Take healing with you. My name is Michael Voris. I've battled depression and suicidal thoughts since I was only 9 or 10 years old. Usually, how it goes is I'll be doing well for a while, and then I hear a voice in my head ask a simple question like, how do you know God is real? Or what makes you so sure that if you died, you wouldn't go to hell? Not long ago, I found myself in the hospital on two different occasions having suicidal thoughts because I believed I was going to hell. I went to sleep every night feeling like God hated me and like my life was coming to an end. The hospital put me on antipsychotics, antidepressants, and Benadryl at night so that I could sleep. I had lost a lot of weight because I wasn't eating enough, and what I did eat, I threw up because I was so fearful that I couldn't keep the food down. I would wake up every morning feeling like God was so far away from me and that I was truly alone. And as horrifying as that experience was, when I was in the hospital, I got the chance to share the gospel with two of my roommates. I found myself telling them about God and what salvation meant, even though I was doubting my own. I saw their eyes light up as I shared the message of Jesus. I told them about the love of God, even though I wasn't experiencing it. And as I look back on everything that happened, I can see how God was working behind the scenes to bless others through me. I cried out for God to touch me, and He did it by using me to touch the lives of others. I didn't feel His closeness, but I got to bring others closer to Him. And in a strange way, it brought me closer to Him as well. I believe that a lot of the confidence I had to share my faith in the hospital came from the experience I gained evangelizing during my time at CFNI. If it hadn't been for the times I was challenged to be bold about what I believe, I don't know if that would have come out when I was in that desperate place. I thank God for all the teachers I had and the relationships I made during my time at CFNI. To be completely transparent, I still struggle with doubts and depression. I still have days of questioning everything. I still wake up some mornings and wonder if God is there. But the beautiful thing about God is that He is near to the brokenhearted. That's why it says in Jude 1.22, Have mercy on those who doubt. God is not surprised when I go through these seasons of depression, and He's not up in heaven waiting for me to get my act together before He lavishes His love upon me. That love is there regardless of my insecurities. That love is there for you too, and it is real. My name is Michael Voris, and I am made for evangelism. We have approximately 60 nations represented each semester. This is a thriving place for miracles, signs, and wonders. You'd have to be here to hear all the stories. That's why I'm encouraging you to come here. Sign up. Nonetheless, um, Dr. Prakash. <laughs> There's a dead spot over there, so she can't hear clearly. I was texting Ms. Ginger. Well, I forgot to say one more thing. We are looking for testimonies from the Voice of Healing meeting. How many people got healed? Can I see your hands? God touched you, delivered you, transformed you, felt the power of the Holy Ghost. Well, here's what you need to do. Go to the link vohc.cfni.org.
Okay, there's a place to contact us or testimonies. Please send us a text of what the Lord has done for God's glory. We we need that for um, just the report of the conference and also some of them will be published in our magazine. So please don't forget, it's vohc.cfni.org. God bless you. Thank you. Lots of things to share with you guys, right? (laughs) That's part of it. Say next year. Next year, VOH, that's this conference, Voice of Healing and Prophetic Conference. It will be September 20 to the 22nd. So if you want to write that down, go ahead and write it down. Because this year has been a blessing and I know next year is going to be even better. We're going to have Barbara Yoder. Have you guys ever heard about her? Okay, amazing. Emma Stark from Scotland. Those are two of the speakers, amazing, amazing people functioning in, functioning in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So we're looking forward to having them next year. So do this with me. I'm a teacher. I like to communicate, right? And I like people to understand. So turn to somebody beside you and tell them the date for next year. Let me see if you got that. <laughs> All right. Did you get that? September the 20th. 20th through to the 22nd. So we're looking forward to that. All right, let me get out of the way. It is my privilege this evening to introduce to you our guest speaker. Nathan Morris is no stranger to Christ for the Nations. He has been here many, many years as a guest speaker. What an anointed vessel of God. I'm telling you, the first time I heard him, I said, I was in the green room and I thought, who is that African out there preaching? I was shocked when I came out and realized he's a white person preaching like that. He, he has a black man's anointing. <laughs> he does, but I love his passion for the word. We have been blessed by it. He preaches. He is truly an anointed evangelist. So many times you hear people talk about being an evangelist, but you can tell he walks in that office. He carries the anointing upon his life. We are blessed to have him. He is the founder and president of Shake the Nations. They reside in central, in central Florida. He lives there with his wife, Rachel. She has been here before. We are so blessed to have him here one more time. Just before he comes, we're going to have a video to show a little bit about what he's doing in his ministry. So, media, can you go ahead and play Tonight, the video? Thank you so much. And after that, we'll have him come. In this stadium, lives will be changed. Vidas serán cambiadas. The Holy Spirit, el Espíritu Santo, is going to fill this stadium. Va a llenar este estadio. Lives will be born again. Vidas van a nacer de nuevo. Bodies will be healed. Cuerpos serán sanados. Jesus, we give you all the glory. Jesús, te damos toda la gloria. We lift up your name. Exaltamos a tu nombre. Tonight, esta noche, you will be glorified. Será glorificado. Nathan, this is Oscar. He's not been able to walk with a straight back for no ha podido years. caminar con su espalda derecho. No. God touched him. Dios lo tocó. He can walk straight. Y ahora puede caminar derecho. Show the people how you used to Enseñale walk. Enseña al pueblo cómo antes caminabas. Now show them what Jesus did last Ahora time. Enseñale lo que Jesús hizo en ti. I believe that there is a woman here that you are pregnant, but the baby feel that it's died in the womb. I said the child will live in Jesus' name. What is happening? She's four months pregnant. She's had three miscarriages. Today in the meeting, she felt her baby kick. I came from hospital. I came straight right here. At the hospital, I was told that they were not feeling the fetal heart. But what did you feel tonight? You felt the baby kick? Teresa. Yes, she felt the baby. Jesus is the miracle worker. Jesus! Jesus! Last year in the stadium, Those of you who were there will remember that this man came upon the stage. He was pleading to God because his daughter was in a coma. I came because of my daughter today. She's in a coma right now. That's why I came right now here. Lord, let the angel of the Lord go to that hospital right now. 
tell the people what happened to Dile you. Al pueblo lo que te pasó. And you prayed. Y tú oraste. I received the, the anointing of the Recibí Holy Spirit. La unción del Espíritu Santo. And I fell. Y me caí. When I went to the back. Cuando fui atrás. Not even five minutes. Ni cinco minutos I pasaron. received the, the call. Recibí una llamada. Moved her hand and opened her eyes. Y abrió sus ojos y movió sus manos. Hallelujah! 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 What is happening? The Ossie here is here to testify. This boy could not walk. He had paralysis. He could not walk because his foot was crooked. But now I've seen that his feet are straight and he's walking straight now. Tell the mom to walk you. Come, 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 come. Do it again, do it again. Praise Jesus. Jesus. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you don't know him as Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you die tonight, si mueres esta noche, where would you spend the eternity? Donde pasaría la eternidad? Jesus is waiting for you right Jesus now. Jesus te está esperando en este momento. Come up to Jesus. Ven a Jesús. Come to Jesus. Ven a Jesús. Come to Jesus. Gospel shall be preached. If you believe it, shall hallelujah. Jesus, a mighty shout of praise. Lift your hands all over this place. Jesus, I worship you. I worship you. I worship you, Lamb of God. I worship you. Tonight, because of the blood of Jesus, the Bible says that we can come before the throne of grace with boldness, without shame, without guilt, heirs of salvation. I want you to lift your hands right now and lift your voice with boldness. And begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Spirit of the living God, I welcome you here. Come and do whatever you seek to do, however you seek to do it. Lord, I declare that this is holy ground. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. I take authority over every sickness, over every disease over every stronghold and I speak the name of Jesus right now that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord of all suffering God have your way tonight let your word be like a labor that purifies our heart let the word be like a hammer that breaks up the stony places Lord I speak to those that are broken those that are in need those that are lukewarm let the fire of God fall upon the altar of every heart father tonight let the name of jesus be exalted in this place we lift up your name we lift up your name not only over christ for the nations not only over dallas but across the united states of america lord you have not forgotten this nation your hand is still upon this land and we're asking lord that you would move again that you would breathe upon the united states that lord once again a great awakening would sweep this land again father do not let the torch of america be extinguished but lord raise up a generation raise up voices raise up men and women that will stand under the mighty hand of god that they will speak the word of the lord that they will not compromise but they will be as bold as lions lord i pray tonight that you would find that even one man one woman that will say yes to you that will yield to you that will surrender to you that your fire would burn that your fire would burn that your fire would burn 
Lord, let this be a company of burning hearts. That is my cry tonight, Lord. Let this be a company of burning hearts. A people united in the faith, united heart to heart, arm in arm. That Lord, we will not allow a generation to slip into hell, but Lord, we will stand in the way and we will declare that there is no other name given to men by which they shall be saved. That we will declare there are not 10 ways, there are not three ways, there is only one way and His name is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the resurrected King, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. I come against every lying spirit in this nation and I speak in the mighty name of Jesus. This land will burn with holy fire upon the altar. So Father, tonight, you know, Lord, I've not come for a meeting. I've not come for a conference. Lord, just find one. Find one and it will be worth it. One heart. That will lay at your feet. That you might breathe your breath of life. Fill them with a word that will cause men's hearts to turn. I give you praise tonight. Lamb of God, I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise, Lord. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. Somebody give God a mighty, mighty shout of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. 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 Stirring yourselves up on the most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. The devil's in trouble. I said the devil's in trouble tonight. No, no, you don't hear me. I said the devil is in trouble tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. Just turn to two people and say, get ready. God is in the house. What a mighty God we serve. I said, what a mighty God we serve. It is my privilege to be at Christ for the Nations. I remember coming here, wow, it must be over 10 years ago. I came to America, what was supposed to be for two days. This has been the longest two days of my life. But I, I came on an invitation by a pastor named John Kilpatrick. He had led the Brownsville Revival for, in the 90s. And he'd heard of a, a young English evangelist that was holding mass crusades across then India, Africa. And he invited me to open the Heavens Conference. Be careful what you call your conferences, by the way. 
Because God might actually do it. And I came over. I remember the first night was great. But as I was preaching on the second night, the glory of God came through the back of the room. By the way, those of you that hide at the back, I know the normal sense is that if I get to the back, then I can just stay on the outside. But it seems in my meetings, the Holy Spirit starts at the back. So those of you that are hiding, I think you're in trouble. The Lord just sets you up. You know, there are destiny moments. There are moments that you can't even pray for because you don't know it's even going to happen. But before you were in your mother's womb, God had already given you destiny moments, divine connections. And they come through obedience. I never planned on being in America. Don't be offended. I was born in England. I was a pastor's son running from God. By the time I was 16, 17, I was already involved in drugs and alcohol. I'd be in the bars and the clubs at 18, 19 years old. My father and my mother would piss the church and they'd be crying out to God for my salvation. I tell my testimony every time I come to Christ for the nations. Because you can be just one young man, one young woman. That sometimes we put preachers on pedestals and it gives us an excuse for, well, I could never be that or I could never do that. But you need to know where I came from. Some nights I should have died. I'm telling you, I came this close to death. And I'd cry out to God and he would save me, but I still wouldn't serve him. That's the goodness of God. When I was 22 years old, I wasn't thinking about getting saved. I was in the house by myself. The power of God came in that room. It felt like someone put an electric cable like a thousand volts in my shoe. I felt power surge up through my legs all the way to the top of my head. And I know this sounds crazy, but in my mind, I'm thinking, what, what, what is happening? I'm going to pass out. And suddenly I was in the floor and the glory of God was so strong upon me. I describe it, it would be like, it's like if you put three of those on your chest. I was shaking under the power of God. I was pouring with sweat. It was like I was in an oven. Some of you look at me like this guy's crazy. People say, how did you know it was God? Well, trust me. When God touches you, you know it's God. And right there, the Lord spoke to me and he said, I have a work for you to do. But if you turn from me today, I will not call you again. I laid there shaking under the power of God. And I said, Lord, I don't know how you're going to do this. My life is a mess. I, 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 I'm a total wreck. But Lord, I surrender. I surrender. And I knew what that meant. This wasn't that I'm going to go to church on a Sunday. I'd grown up in church. I'd seen how church runs. I'd seen people praise God and then cuss them out, cuss you out in the car park. I'd seen it all. I'd seen faithful ones. I'd seen ones that, you know, that... that But I knew that when I got off that floor, I was going to pursue God with everything that I had, with all my heart. 
When I got off that floor, I was totally free. All the chains, all the bondage, all the addiction, everything was broken in my life. And I became a pursuer. For one year of my life, my first year of salvation, I didn't even see a television. I'd just be walking around all day and there was a cry. There was an ache inside of me. I know what Psalms mean when it says the deep calls unto the deep. It was the deep of God calling unto the deep in me. It was the deep in me calling out to the deep of God. God, I want your fire. Lord, I need the fire. That was my cry. Sometimes when I was praying, I'd be like, God, I, I, I wanted to just reach up and just, <sighs> you ever felt like that? It wasn't even my hunger. See, you don't get hungry for God just because you came to a good conference. Actually, when you begin to get hungry from God, for God, God actually takes you through a season where he strips everything away that you think you need. And then he says, now you're hungry. God spent the first two years of my salvation, in fact, the first five years of my salvation, making sure there was no plan B. All my bridges gone. I graduated, I was a graphic designer, I had my own freelance. God shut the whole thing down. I'd gone from that to trying to apply for a job at your equivalent of Walmart and they wouldn't even give me a job at Walmart. But I started going out on the streets. And I'd be preaching outside the nightclubs I used to be in. My friends thought I'd had a nervous breakdown. Some of you are too young to know what I'm just about to say, but there, there was this thing by Carmen called the blood. No? Okay. Some of you older know, know what I'm saying, right? I'd go out. I'd never done drama in my life. I'd put a white t-shirt on, I covered it in red ink. I'd be outside the nightclub going, this blood is for you. But you see, when God puts a fire in your heart, you can't contain it. It has to come out. It was in 2006 when God spoke to me. 2002 I came to Christ, 2006, that same fire would fall on me periodically. Sometimes it would last for days. I was beside myself. I would feel like crazy. I'd feel like burning in my hands and I'd be on fire. You'd have thought I was crazy. In fact, if you were religious, I was like, on, on a Sunday, I was your worst nightmare. Like, I'd be weeping just over the offering. I mean, I just couldn't believe where God had brought me from and where he brought me to. I couldn't believe that I was in such bondage. And now, I was the righteousness of God. Woo! God gave me the scripture in Haggai 2.7. It says, I will shake all nations and they will come to the desire of all nations. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The Lord spoke to me and said, you will call it shake the nations. It was like God strapped me into a Holy Ghost jetpack rocket. It doesn't go left, it doesn't go right, and it certainly doesn't go in reverse. It just... Within the first two years of the ministry, we'd witnessed over 100,000 Muslims come to Christ. In those meetings around the world, I remember walking into fields and thousands upon thousands of people. You know, guess what? I didn't have Facebook. 
Can you believe it? I didn't have partners. There was no TikTok. I wasn't networking. But I had a fire in my heart. And I knew that this was a supernatural work of the Holy Ghost. That I wasn't drawing them. Jesus was drawing them to those fields. And they were coming in their tens of thousands. In 2010, Pastor Kilpatrick heard of these meetings. And he invited me for two days. On the second night, I was preaching just like this. The glory of God rolled in. I, I heard a wailing sound begin to rise in the building. And people started just literally falling out of their seats. I felt the glory of God just roll in like a wave. It hit me. I was out on the floor. I didn't know what was happening. There was a man in that meeting. He wasn't even saved. He, his wife had dragged him to the service. Like, you don't come, you don't eat. He was blind in his right eye. He jumped up and he started screaming. He didn't know what was happening. And that started two and a half years of what became known as the Bay of the Holy Spirit revival. A month in, a woman named Delia Knox, I'll show you that video tomorrow. She was paralyzed from the waist down for 23 years. She came to the service because her husband was a bishop. We were like four weeks in and thousands were coming from all over the world. We'd moved from a, a, a church into the big arena in Mobile, Alabama. Every night the glory of God would roll in. And this one night the Lord spoke to me. He said, call the bishop. I, I called the bishop. And as I called the bishop, the Lord just put this out of my mouth. Where's your wife? And they wheeled this woman I'd never met in my life. And I knew God just set me up. He loves to do that, by the way. We were live around the world. And I thought, Lord, if she doesn't come out of this chair, Jesus, take the wheel. But that night, as she got out of that wheelchair... That's when ABC and all those came flooding in. and It was a moment, a destiny moment. I met my wife during that revival. We got married. I had over 1,500 people at the wedding that I didn't even know. But you know, when I came to become a citizen, I went to go to the ceremony. And as I stood there, I felt the anointing of God real strong. And suddenly I realized that I was making a covenant. I wasn't just swearing allegiance to a flag. I was making a covenant with the Lord that I would fight for this generation, in this nation, in this land. See, tonight, I, I've really not come just to entertain you or to have a good meeting. The hour is too late. I said the hour is too late. The warfare is greater than we've ever seen it. And I'm telling you, you need to be on fire for God. You won't make it through the night hour if you're not burning. Jesus said in Matthew 25 as he spoke about the five foolish virgins, those that didn't have oil in their lamps. Could it be that Jesus was prophesying to a generation that half of them would be sleeping through the night hour, that we would not know until it was too late that we weren't burning, that we didn't have enough oil in our lamps. And without the oil, there's no revelation. We don't see in the darkness. But God is calling those, the burning ones, that will be awakened in this hour to know I'm not supposed to be preaching yet to know the hour in which they stand to be awakened to 
a moment that God has called you to stand. Gordon Lindsay, he did not choose for this time. Smith Wigglesworth, he didn't choose for this time. I could go on and on and on of all those that he did not choose for this time. He chose you. He called you to stand at such a time as this. I feel like preaching. Can I preach? You know, we just got back just a few months ago. I was in the nation of the Ukraine. I got in through Poland, through the Red Cross, right in the middle of a nation in war. I met with over 1,500 leaders. And I'm telling you, Miss Ginger, the glory of God in those meetings was breathtaking. 1,500 leaders, one pastor's wife, she'd lost her husband and her child, but she still came to those meetings. And I remember one night, I was holding the microphone and the glory of God, I mean, it was incredible. And I just started to weep because I'm thinking, what am I doing with the microphone? How can I preach to these people that are laying down their lives for the sake of the gospel? And let me tell you right now what is happening in the Ukraine. And I'm not preaching against Russian people. There are, I preached across many to many, many, many Russian people. But what the enemy is seeking to do in this hour is cause such a spirit of antichrist to be released to the nations of the world. But I want to tell you right now, the church in the Ukraine is in revival. I'm telling you right now, because when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard against him. I'm praying that revival fire will burn in the Ukraine so that they will become a, a burning light to Europe, that Europe shall be saved. Can you say amen? I just came back from the stadium in Mexico. I was in the stadium in Peru. I leave on Sunday, so on Saturday I preach here. Then I have to go straight to the airport. We fly into the stadium in Honduras. I preach Sunday, it will be broadcast live on television to the nation. Five to seven million people will be hearing the gospel right in that stadium in Honduras. Can you say amen? I said, can you say amen? What a mighty God we serve. Are you ready for the Word of God? Three of you. Are you ready for the Word of God? I want you to turn with your Bibles, please, to the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12. In fact, I'm going to read maybe chapter 11, verse 32, and then we'll go into 12. A very well-known passage of Scripture. But there's something I believe somebody needs to hear tonight. Hebrews chapter 11, for those of you that will be here in the morning, I have a word burning on my heart. It will be an impartation service, so please don't miss it. I have to leave, like I said, straight from here to the airport. All my team, everybody now is in Honduras. They're preparing the stadium, and we're believing for a mighty harvest of souls. But tonight... I'm in Dallas at Christ for the Nations. I know this has already been said, but Dennis and Ginger Lindsay, I want to honor you with all my heart. You've always been so kind. I thank God for your legacy to so many, many, many around the world. It really is my honor to be with you. I thank God. Can we give God just some praise for the lives of Dr. Dennis and Ginger Lindsay? Let's get into the Word of God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Japheth, 
also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong. Are you here in this church? Out of weakness, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens, of the foreigners. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they may obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Verse 38. Of whom the world was not worthy. Wow. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us. Everyone say, for me. For God having provided something better for us that they, wow, listen to this. This is incredible. That they should not be made perfect apart from us. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. Everyone say weight. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus. Not the next big preacher. Not the next big movement. Not the lights or the smoke machines or the next big worship team. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Whew. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Father, speak to every heart. Pierce every heart. Lord, I pray tonight that your fire would fall on the altar. The Lord out of this place, there will not be just healing and salvation. The Lord, there would also be ones that you will raise up, Lord, in this hour for such a time as this. The Lord, we will run our race with fire. Somebody say, Hallelujah. It was in 2020, I was in my office, it was 3 a.m. It was the night of the U.S. election. I was praying for the nation and suddenly the Spirit of the Lord came into my office. I was trembling under the hand of God. I felt the fire of God. I felt the glory of God, but this was different. It was the fear of the Lord. I'm not a man of vision. I don't have many visions. Some of you have so many visions you scare me. God tells you what jeans to wear on a Monday and what cereal to eat on a Tuesday. God bless you, but you scare me. I've not had many visions. The ones that I've had have literally defined my life, my purpose. But 
I trembled under the hand of God because I began to hear the sound of a warship alarm. Like, you know, on a submarine when... I began to hear that sound. It was more real than the voice you're hearing right now. And I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, sound the alarm. Sound the alarm. It felt like God was turning a page. That we were in the last seconds of the last minutes of the last hour. To what God has already decreed when Jesus said that there will be wars and rumors of wars, nation rising against nation, there will be famine and pestilence in various places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. I believe we are entering into that time. Things are changing in the nations of the world. Even in America, we have a generation that calls evil good and good. I felt like the Lord. There was a cry coming from heaven to those who were here. Sound the alarm. Sound the alarm. It was an awakening. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go out and meet him. Romans 13, 12 says, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. That is the gospel. It is a gospel of urgency. It is a gospel that brings a man or a woman to the valley of decision. I once heard an evangelist, I was in a meeting and I heard an evangelist say, well, if you don't want to make a decision tonight, you have tomorrow. And in my seat, I nearly leapt out of that seat. I don't know what it took to keep me in there, but I nearly leapt out and said, no, they don't have tomorrow. Choose this day whom you will serve. Today, now is the day of salvation. See, Jesus said in John 12, 35, walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. Walk. Even though it's dark, keep moving. Even though it doesn't feel like God is moving, keep walking, keep believing, keep preaching, keep testifying, keep moving. See, I'm preaching to people right now that if you were honest, a fire in your heart doesn't burn like it used to burn. You make that sound good by, well, I've matured. That's not maturing. That's lukewarm. And I'm not here just preaching at you. Because there are times when God has to come to me and remind me that I don't become, I don't set my temperature by everybody else. That I don't set my temperature by every other preacher. But I got to realize there are times where the culture, your surroundings, the atmosphere, it can cause you to just lower the bar. And then God comes and says, no, let the fire burn. Don't. I've not called you to be set by the atmosphere. I've called you to burn and change the atmosphere. Ephesians 4.11 says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy, to walk worthy, to walk worthy of the calling by which you were called. Walk worthy. The more the church sounds like the world, looks like the world, 
the more my heart becomes grieved. See, Paul, he gives us this incredible picture. He speaks. Did you think I would come in just to speak on healing tonight? That I'd, I'd give you the three steps of the five ways of how to heal the sick? And I'd give you a little PowerPoint presentation. See, people say to me, do you have a healing ministry? I say, no, I preach the gospel. I've seen the blind see and the deaf hear. I've seen the lame walk. I've seen, I've seen God recreate an iris of an eyeball right in front of me. I've seen legs grow out. But, but I, God didn't call me to a healing ministry. He called me to preach the gospel. And when you preach the gospel, when you preach about Jesus, that fire begins to burn and miracles happen because he comes with healing in his wings. See, tonight I'm pointing to eternity. I'm pointing every heart to the Lamb of God to be awakened. That your heart is set on eternity and not what is happening on CNN or even Fox News. That our eyes are fixed on Jesus. Paul is giving this incredible picture of this eternal stadium. He speaks of those that have gone before. People that had laid down their lives, some of them didn't even ask for deliverance, wouldn't accept deliverance so that they would receive a better resurrection. They closed the mouth of lions. They were scourged. They were beaten. He points to them in the grandstands as the praise rises to our champion, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. And he says, those of you that are running your race, they're cheering you on. Gordon Lindsay is cheering you on. Harold Roberts is cheering you on. The greats that have gone before are looking down at you, bro. And they're saying, run, run, run with fire, run with everything you have. Run your race. See, that there's this incredible line in, in verse 38 and it says that the world was not worthy of them. I pray that when we stand before God, when we all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, that might be said over us. That the world was not worthy of you. Because in that moment, it won't, it won't matter how many Facebook friends you've got or whether your little video clip was popular on Twitter. The only thing that will matter on that day is when you kneel before the king is what happened that counted for eternity. You can't take money, you can't take cars. You can't take houses. God has blessed my life, but I don't pursue him for a bigger house. The only thing you can take is people. That is all that counts. Oh God. I saw a hundred blind people see. You didn't do nothing. He did it. That's not your reward. Your reward is that you ran with all your heart, with everything you have, that you were bold, that you preached what God told you to preach, that you went where God told you to go, that you reached out to the broken and the dying and the lost and the orphan, that you were a vessel of honor that his spirit could flow through, that out of you, God could put eternity in their hearts. You 
You know, we're in the process of launching a Evangelist Daniel Kalender is a dear friend of mine. What's happening in Central Florida, all the evangelists, something's happening. It's like there's a clarion call. Evangelists from all over the world are coming to Central Florida. We're launching our school of evangelism. But I'm not here to, to raise up just preachers. God's got to put eternity in your heart. That we run with fire. Do you hear me? I'm not just preaching to young people. My grandmother was one of the greatest soul winners I ever saw. You put a microphone in her hand, she would, she would pass out. But if she could get you in the living room with a cup of tea or coffee, you were toast. If she could get you in that living room and give you a little baking, you want some cake? You took that cake and you don't know Jesus, you're in trouble. See, you might have gray hair. That doesn't mean you've retired. No. While ever there's breath in your body, God has put eternity in your heart that you can run with fire. Looking unto Jesus. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. You remember Jesus said when these signs take place, what did he tell you to do? Where are the Bible students? Oh, don't you hide. I can see you. What did Jesus tell us to do? Matthew 24, what? Look up. He said, look up. In other words, everything that you have, every awareness, fix your eyes on me. Put your eyes on me. You see, when you come into the presence of God, you fix your eyes on Jesus. I'm tired of coming into meetings and trying to entertain people and make people feel good. We're not here to entertain you. We're here to fix our eyes on the champion, the one that led the way, the one that endured the cross, the one that bore the sin of the whole world so that we might be called the righteousness of God. What a mighty God we serve. There's nothing more powerful than the blood of Jesus. And then Paul says something. Can I go deeper? Is that okay? Paul is preparing a generation. And he says... All those that went before didn't receive the promise. And then there's this statement that blows my mind. It says that they can't be made perfect without you. Did you hear me? They're waiting for you to cross the finish line. Because when you cross the finish line, the story is now finished. In other words, they're waiting because they can't be fulfilled without you crossing the line, bringing the baton, that which was passed from the Savior of the world. God is saying, there are those waiting that didn't receive the promise. They say, you're carrying the Spirit of God. Run, 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 run. Run with fire. I preached all of that just to get to what I need to say right now. Paul then writes, laying aside every weight. God gave him this message just a few weeks ago. I came out of the crusade in Mexico. I got delayed in Mexico a day. So that meant I only had half a day to get back to Orlando, pack my bag, and then I was to fly to Paris. In Paris, there were gonna be 12,000 people waiting. I was the only speaker, and I had to be there. We got to Orlando. 
And there was a lightning storm. So the, the flight was delayed. I was flying into Manchester. The problem is about Manchester, England right now is there's no transfer lounge. You have to go and collect your bags. So I'm already late. I got to get another flight and I've got to land in Paris that day. So I go to the baggage claim and I'm waiting for my baggage. I'd flown all night. I'd been stuck in Mexico a whole day and now I'm praying, Jesus, take the wheel. Please, Lord. And I'm waiting for the baggage. And the baggage was taking an eternity. Now I'm getting angry. And I'm saying, Lord, I don't want to lose my salvation today. Please, Jesus. I'm asking the guy, where's the baggage? And he's looking at me like, do you speak English? And I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting. We finally get the baggage and we run all the way to check it back in. I get to the, the check-in and the guy looks at me and he says, thank you for being a diamond member. I'm sorry to tell you there's no flight. I said, put me on the next flight. They said, no, you don't understand. The UK government, uh, they've actually limited the flights because of the baggage problems. In the baggage claim, there was bags piled up. I mean, to the ceiling, thousands of cases just left. So now I'm stressed because I got to be there. I'm tired. I'd preach nights in the crusade. I'm like, Jesus, please just get me there. Just get me there. They said, this is what we'll do. You can wait five hours and we'll put you on a flight to Ireland, the wrong direction. I said, okay, five hours. They said, you need to take your baggage. What I didn't know was about two miles. You're gonna fly with a company called Aer Lingus. Me too, I'd never heard of them. It sounded like Spirit Airlines already. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I never heard of these people. Aer Lingus? I've flown for 20 years. I'm like, I've never heard of this company. So we go for two miles. We're carrying all the baggage. We get to the, 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 the new terminal. And when I walk in, people are fighting. I mean like fighting. It was chaos. I've had no sleep. I'm stood in the line and the guy in front of me said, I've been waiting here three and a half hours. We were there another hour. He goes to the desk. Imagine this. He goes to the desk and he said, I'm here to check in for New York. She said, New York? No, 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 that's the other terminal. He just turned around. I saw the fear in his eyes and he just set off running. We check the baggage in. We wait five hours, I fly to Ireland, I wait another three hours. We were 12 hours delayed. I then fly from Ireland all the way to Paris. We get to Paris, it's gone midnight. I go to the baggage claim and I'm waiting for the baggage. Now there's no one in the airport. I'm exhausted, I gotta preach tomorrow to 12,000 people and the next day. No baggage. Scott's like, the baggage will come, my assistant, it'll come. I'm like, no, 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 it's not coming, it's not here. We waited an hour, no baggage. I go back to the hotel. Scott said, the first thing in the morning, I'll go to the airport, it'll be on the next flight. Early in the morning, he goes, he's in the airport for 10 hours waiting for my baggage. I'm on the phone for four and a half hours trying to speak to a human being. And then the pastor called me. He said, evangelist, do you have your baggage? I said, no. 
I said I'm in a pair of tracksuit bottoms that I've been wearing for 48 hours. There's no way I can preach like this. He said, well, get to the mall. It was like 90 degrees in Paris. There was no air conditioning in the mall. I'm running through the mall. I'm pouring with sweat. I'm like, we got to do teamwork. I got my assistant. I'm like, you go get the wax, the, the toothbrush, the hairspray. You get whatever you need, like my toiletries. He's like, what kind do you like? I said, get anything you can. We got like half an hour. I'm running like this. I go into, I'm like getting jean stores. I'm just in the thing going, oh Lord, it's too tight. I put on weight. Have I put on weight? And then I'm going to the next thing. I'm like, Jesus, I got to walk out in front of all these people. I was just putting my car through like this. I'm like, my wife's gonna kill me when I get home. I'm like $2,000 in the hole. I run back to the car, I'm now late for the service. They're calling me like, evangelist, they're here, it's packed, you gotta get here. I'm like, I'm coming, I'm coming. I get to the hotel, I run up, I'm cutting tags off, I'm pulling tags off my new clothes. I put my clothes on, I'm down in 15 minutes, I'm in the car. Now I'm in the car and I'm repenting, going, Jesus, I've not prayed. Lord, I've not prayed, I'm not ready. Jesus, I'm sorry. It's like the Lord's going, son. I'm sorry to break this to you, but I don't really need you. Just get out there. Just open that big mouth. Just do that. I'll do, it. I'll do the rest. I go out there in the glory of God. I mean, the miracles. That night was awesome. I preached the next day. I, I remember being sat in the hotel and I'm like, Lord, could you not have just got my baggage? I'm on an assignment. You sent me here. Lord, it's like my identity is in the baggage, the clothes that make me comfortable. I'm flying back to Orlando. I had one day before we were going into the next crusade. I get to Orlando Airport, we flew all the hours to Atlanta, Atlanta, into Orlando. I get to Orlando, I'm at the baggage claim, this time I've got a new case. I got new clothes. Guess what? Seriously. When I was stood at the desk, I was just like, Lord, Lord, don't let me lose it, Jesus. Don't let me... Did you lose your baggage? Yes, you lost it on the way there. I was running around the mall. I've had a major comfort. I've had to, and you've lost it on the way home. But I tell you that story because I was praying and the Holy Spirit took me back. And he reminded me of the words that I spoke to him in the hotel room. I said, Lord, it's like my identity is in the baggage. I needed the baggage. Could you not? And that's when the Holy Spirit took me to this scripture. Because another translation says, Paul says, get rid of the excess baggage. Paul said, Get rid of the excess baggage. See, I don't know who I'm preaching to right now. I know you look holier than thou. But everyone has baggage. I mean, people that love God, they're called to evangelism. They're called to shake nations. They're called to impact areas that God has called them to. But they've got baggage. I've, been, I've seen people destroyed, paralyzed in their faith, can't run anymore. You see, if the devil can get you to pick up some baggage. See, some of you, even as a child, the enemy get, got you to believe that you were rejected, that no one loved you, that 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 happened to you was your fault. And all your life, you've carried some baggage that you believe you have to carry. 
See, I'm preaching to people right now. You were offended 20 years ago. Somebody hurt you. You were going to launch your ministry. You were going to run with fire. But something happened and the enemy lied to you and you picked up some baggage of offense. And the God is saying, run. I've called you to run. But the baggage is weighing See, I don't know what your baggage is tonight. Broken dreams can become baggage that you carry for the rest of your life and it kills your faith. Never should have worked out that way. Never thought that that would happen. God, I was doing this for you. How did you let that happen? Broken dreams cause baggage that when God speaks, we hesitate to respond. See, I'm preaching to people right now. You know you've got baggage. Some of you have had your baggage locked up for so long that not even your wife, not even your husband, not even your father or your mother has the key because nobody, nobody can see See, I'm preaching to people right now. You've got baggage of regret. You know you're forgiven. You know the blood of Jesus has washed you. But you're still living with the consequence of something that happened in your life. You worship Jesus. But you've got some baggage that you think has limited you, that it has limited your destiny, limited how far you can go. See, I'm preaching to people right now. So many are here. I see this all the time. I see people come to my meetings and if you lift up their, their sleeves, they cut themselves with blades. Because somehow, that rejection, they blame themselves for it. And they cut themselves because they want to feel the pain. I've seen God heal the scars of someone that carried a lie for so long that they believed it was their fault. And they carried that baggage. And every time God said, step out, run with fire, run your race, they had every reason why God could never... See, if you carry that baggage long enough, the enemy will bind you in so many chains that you'll not even believe what I'm preaching right now. If you carry that baggage long enough, the enemy will gag you that you won't even be able to open your mouth to praise God anymore. I've seen people weighed down with the baggage of a lie that was never theirs to carry. Paul says you gotta throw it off. In order to run, you gotta let go of the baggage. I'm preaching to somebody right now. Listen, I've lived through church splits. I've lived through those that rose up against the very thing that God had called them to because of some baggage that they couldn't let go. Baggage is one of the biggest revival killers you'll ever see. Did you hear me? See, I'm preaching to some people that you're stuck. I don't know what your baggage is. It may be a broken home. It may be that once you were saved and now you've fallen into sin and you can't quite get rid of the baggage. Something that weighs you down, the hurt, the habit, the rejection, the anger, the lust, the lies about your future. Unresolved issues that you feed upon in order to make your dysfunction 
seem good. Is this too deep tonight? See, I read a scripture in 1 Samuel 10, and it's the, 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 the Bible speaks of Samuel anointing Saul. And the Bible says that he took a flask of oil and he poured it on his head and he kissed him and he said, is it not because the Lord has anointed you commander over his inheritance? This man is called, he's chosen, he's anointed. But watch this. The prophet says to him, the spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you will prophesy and be turned into another man. When these signs come to you, do whatever the, the occasion demands because God is with you. He's anointed. But if you read the story, you realize that Saul had some baggage. The Benjamites were the smallest tribe because a few generations earlier, some Benjamite men took a woman, they raped her, they killed her. And it caused a civil war in the family of God. The rest of the tribes of Israel came to wipe out the Benjamites and they left only 600 men left. It was out of this devastation that God finds a man named Saul and he says, you're the man, I'm gonna anoint you. But the Bible says that when the moment came that Saul was to step out in front of those that God had chosen him to lead, in, in front of those that God had anointed him to stand, the people looked and said, where is he? He's missing, where is he? And I read this, it blew my mind. Because there's a Hebrew word, and that word is kale, K-L-I-Y, and it means stuff, baggage. They inquired of the Lord, and the Lord used that word, kale, kalai. You know what he said? He said, you want to find the one that I've anointed? This is his moment to step into his destiny. But they said, where is he? And God said, you find him. Hiding behind the baggage. You find my anointed hiding behind the baggage. Hiding behind the stuff. I've called him to stand under my anointing, under my authority. But he's hiding behind the baggage. And you see, I'm preaching to some people right now that you've been hiding behind the baggage for too long. You see, the baggage becomes your identity and your identity becomes your excuse. And you limit what God can ever do in your life because you've already got an answer. I'm hiding behind the baggage. If it wasn't for him or it wasn't for her, if they wouldn't have rejected me, if they wouldn't have spoken against me. I remember when I came into ministry, I thought everybody wanted the fire of God. I thought everybody loved Jesus and they want to see the glory of God until I was anointed and then all hell broke loose. And those that I thought would be with me weren't with me. And when God started to use me, suddenly on YouTube, they were drawing horns on my head and they called me the child of the devil. And I'm like, what is going on? But you see, the enemy was trying to get me to pick up some baggage, to pick up some offense, to pick up something that he knew would weigh me down in a moment when God says, step into your destiny, step into your purpose. I've called you, I've anointed you, run with fire. Don't hide behind the package. Don't hide behind the lies. You see, God doesn't give you that excuse. That's why He died, that's why He shed His blood. We don't have baggage to hide behind. See, I thank God 
that there are men and women in the word that didn't hide behind the baggage. There was a man named Hezekiah. He was raised by a wicked king, Ahaz, a man that boarded up the temple and shut down Judaism. He built pagan shrines to false gods, but Hezekiah wouldn't hide behind the baggage. Hezekiah wouldn't make the excuse that I've got baggage. No, he said, yes, Lord. He didn't hide behind the baggage and God used him to lead one of the greatest revivals in human history. Don't hide behind the baggage. I could talk about Esther and Joseph and Timothy. All had the excuse of some baggage. Could I dare to even look along the lineage of Christ? And in Matthew 1, this wasn't the norm, but there are, there are four women that are mentioned. Tamar, Rahab, Ruth. Tamar, an incestuous harlot. Rahab, a prostitute from Jericho. Ruth, a Moabitess, an outsider to God's covenant people. Bathsheba, a woman who had an adulterous affair with King David. All these were listed and they had baggage, but they don't hide behind the baggage because Jesus Christ hung on a cross and he shed his blood and he said it is finished. And now those women don't have to hide behind the baggage. They are the righteousness of God called by the one who bore the sin of the world. I'm preaching to somebody right now. It's time to let go of the baggage and run with fire in Jesus' mighty name. Give God a mighty shout of praise. The hour is late. We don't have time. Stop carrying the baggage that the enemy has tricked you and lied to you and made it your identity. Philippians 3.12 says, not that I have already attained or I'm already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Glory to God. Glory to God. I feel the fire of God right now. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press. I run. I press toward the goal for the prize of my champion, the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. You see, my friend, you can't reach out for your destiny while you're still holding on to your history. You got to step into grace and Step under that which God has called you to be. Stop carrying the baggage and let's run with fire. I said, let's run with fire. See, Hebrews 12, 12, do, do I have much time? Oh Lord. Did we say 9.30? I'm in trouble. Are we okay? Am I okay? You sure? <laughs> Hebrews 12.12 12 says, Therefore strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated but rather healed. You see, if you carry your baggage for so long, you become dislocated from the body. You become dislocated from the Holy Spirit speaking His Word into your life. You begin to close your ears and harden your heart because you hold on to the baggage. Your eyes are no longer, longer on the prize, no longer on the champion. You spend years maintaining your baggage because it becomes your identity. I've laid hands on thousands and thousands of people. And some of them come and they want me to stand 10 minutes while they tell me everything that's wrong with them. 
all the baggage, all that people have done to them. And you see, it's not that I don't have compassion. It's not that I don't have compassion, but I'm listening to what is coming out of your mouth. It has become a spiel of identity. It becomes a thing that you tell people and it brings attention to the carnal. And it's somehow you get wrapped in the lie of an enemy that wants to weigh you down. And you see, I believe the Holy Spirit is trying to break some chains right now. He's trying to get you tonight to leave some baggage because there's it's time to run like never before. I believe you're on the doorstep to some of the greatest breakthroughs you've ever seen. Who am I preaching to? Give God a mighty shout of praise. Paul said, let go of the baggage and the sin that so easily ensnares you. The word puts it this way. Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest any fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up causes trouble, and by this many become defiled. Brother, it's the Jezebel spirit, no. It's just roots of bitterness. It's just baggage. Not everything's the spirit of Jezebel, no. Some of it is, a, is some baggage that you, they, they won't let the Holy Spirit in. And that's why whenever it springs up, whenever they're about to step into the promise, whenever they're about to step into what God has called them, it begins to rise up and it brings trouble that causes them to be defiled. Why? Because they go back to the same pain and the same lie and the same anger. And I'm here tonight because somebody is about to get set free. I said somebody is about to get set free in Jesus. Jesus' mighty name. Give God a mighty shout of praise. It takes the Holy Spirit. It takes the love of God. And it takes the work of Christ in you to let go of the package. Luke 17, Jesus said to his disciples, it is impossible that no offenses should come. Yeah, you heard that. You want to be used by God? Get ready to be offended. God, they said nasty things against me. I quit. Lord, I quit. I spoke to people, they said, I used to be a pastor. What do you mean you used to be a pastor? I used to be an evangelist. Are you, well, what? Did God change his mind? Oh, you don't want to know that. Okay. What you really mean is something happened to you and you quit. Because if you were really called as evangelist or you were really called and separated and brought out and anointed, it wasn't a part-time job. It was the call from God to run your race. I'm preaching this in a different way tonight because God's putting his finger on somebody right now. I'm telling you, I feel it. <laughs> See, if you're offended, you've got baggage. Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, you've got to be perpetually letting it go. Let it go. Let it go. Don't wait. Don't let the enemy lie to you. Let go of the baggage. You're probably not going to shout at this, but 
Let me show you how to get rid of the baggage. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 44, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. No, he didn't say send a Facebook message where you rip them apart and you call the judgment of God down on them. No, he said bless those who curse you. I remember when the Lord once said to me, he said, son, I want you to send $10,000 to those people. I'm like, no, 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 I don't, no, 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 no. Lord, no, 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 you got that wrong. Don't you remember? They tried to destroy me. They tried to, no, no. God said, that's why, send it now. Yeah, but Lord, are you sure? Send it now. Don't pick up the baggage. Because if you pick up the baggage, you close the artery. I can't flow through. Like I used to flow through you. If you won't let go of the offense. See, I believe some of you. See, the Bible teaches us, and do I have time? I, I, I'm gonna, I promise you, I'm going to finish. The fire of God's going to fall in a mighty way. But you see, the scripture teaches that if you will not judge yourself, when he speaks about the Lord's table, it says many of you are sick and sleep because you will not judge yourself. I read to you in scripture that the Bible speaks that those that have offense, those that have roots of bitterness, that it brings defilement. And you see, I'm trying to preach to somebody right now. If you won't let go of the baggage, the Spirit of God can't flow through you like He used to flow through you. While ever you're speaking about that minister or is coming against this person or backbiting this person, you're stopping the flow of the Holy Ghost. You're stopping the oil from flowing. And I'm here to preach to somebody right now. Because God has called you to shake nations. He's called you to be a world changer, to shake your family, to change the atmosphere. But you've got to let go of the baggage right here, right now, in Jesus' name. I don't know about you, but I want to run with fire. We're looking at those that have gone before. They were sawn in two. And somebody came against you on Facebook. What, somebody didn't speak to you the right way when you came into the service? Oh. And yet we say, God. I want to use me to shake nations. And God says, yes, but you get offended when somebody doesn't agree with you. You see, what is coming upon the earth? You know, God showed me when I first came to ministry, I saw 12 stadiums in one night. And light was coming out of all these stadiums. And I saw a nation begin to tremble. Like the plates began to shift. And it was like God was showing me, I'm going to show you multiplication on a level you've never seen before. This is not going to be about one man or not one woman. I, I've sat with great men. I've sat with Reinhard Bonnke and many of the great evangelists. But the end time harvest is bigger than one man and one ministry. This is going to be about the body of Christ. And you see, I'm trying to preach to somebody right now. Because you can get the fire of God, but if you won't let go of the offense, if you keep carrying the baggage, you'll be locked into infant you'll be locked into immaturity and you will be defeated too easily we got to be willing to love like we've never loved before forgive like we've never forgiven before bless those who curse us but realize this while ever you've got your eyes on the champion I remember some days that I go on my prayer walks I'm like God I gotta deal with them please let me deal with them 
I'm like one of those keyboard warriors. I'm like, one, I'm, I'm going to get you. And then I put my eyes on Jesus. I fix my eyes on the Lamb of God that took the abuse and he took the shame and he took the rejection. And it's like he's looking at me like, son, don't you dare. See, I believe tonight some of you, the fire of God's going to fall on you like you've never known before. Because right now in your heart, you're letting it go. You're throwing off the baggage. You're throwing off all the lies of the enemy. I want to tell you right now, you are anointed. You are chosen. You are blood washed. You are the righteousness of God. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I don't need the baggage. I give the Holy Spirit the key because I ain't carrying it anymore. Devil, you're in trouble because I've been weighed down for too long. I'm going to run while ever there's breath in my body. I'm going to see the promises of God in my life. Give God a mighty shout of praise. I want the keyboard player to come quickly, but I'm not finished. Just, just sit down, sit down. I don't know who I'm preaching to right now, but unforgiveness... It's like you drinking poison and expecting them to die. Let it go. And run with fire. Do you have any sins, brother? Give me a little bit of sin. I read something in 1 Samuel 17. This is incredible. See, how many know David had baggage? Some theologians say that when he wrote in Psalms 51.5, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. Some say that it could have been an illegitimate relationship, like David was an illegitimate child. That's why his father didn't call him when Samuel said, bring the sons. One of them's a king. They never even thought of them because somehow could it be he was an illegitimate child. He was rejected by his brothers. He was forgotten. But in 1 Samuel 17, 20, this is what the Bible says. It says, for Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array army against army. In other words, this was a destiny moment. There was a fight that was about to define. It was not only going to define a generation, but generations to come. But verse 22, you see that word Calais. And it reads, and David left his baggage in the hands of the keeper of the baggage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. Some of you look bored. Are you bored? How you don't shout at that, I'll never know. David before he stepped into his destiny. It says he left his baggage with the keeper of the baggage. See, Jesus said, come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He was really saying, I'm the keeper of the baggage. Bring me your baggage. Leave your baggage with me and run and join the fight. Run and step into your purpose. Step into your destiny. I've anointed you. Now give me your baggage and go and join the fight. See, I'm preaching to somebody right now. The Holy Spirit says, give me your baggage. I'm talking about stuff that's deep.
really worship the Lord. See, the oil begins to flow. See, I'm going to give an altar call in a minute. And there's going to be people. But you know you got to get down here. And the fire of God's going to flow through you. Because it's time to run with fire. Come here, my sister. Give me a hand. Now! stop you from being anointed he can't stop you from being called and he can't stop you from being chosen the only thing he can do is get you to pick up some baggage and when you let go of the weight and the baggage and the lies there's nothing he can do because you will run with fire tonight that will surrender and fix your eyes on Jesus you may be here tonight and you're lukewarm and you say God my heart's not burning but tonight Lord I surrender because I don't want to stand before you on that day and suddenly I realize that I was stuck that I never ran what you called me to run that those that laid down their lives for the sake of Christ are looking at me and saying, why did you not run? Why did you not surrender? We were cheering you on. Jesus will look at you and say, I was praying for you. Come here. I feel the glory of God right now. Right now, from the top of the head to the soles of your feet. See, you can't give what you don't have. You can't give what you don't have. I've not come for a conference. I've come for the burning ones that say, Lord. But listen, there's a lot happening in the world today. The enemy is trying to weigh down a generation. You understand that that spirit of Antichrist is trying to strip a generation of its identity. So now there's not male nor female. But I got news for hell. And I got news for that Antichrist spirit. God, the Bible says that God made man and woman in His image. Male and female. I don't care what hell says. I ain't picking up that lie. I ain't picking up the baggage. I'm going to preach the Word of God. And let the God who answers by fire, let Him be God. Where are the burning ones? Where are the ones that will run with fire? Bring me this young man right now. Preach! Preach! Never the same. 
Come here, my brother. Fire! Right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now. I give you praise, Lord Jesus. You have to encounter God for yourself. You have to encounter Jesus for yourself. God wants to show himself to you. That you'll know more than the air you breathe that he's with you. Lord, let her never be the same again. Let her never be the same again. Lift your hands all over this building. Miracles are going to happen all over this room tonight. I see a mighty call upon this young woman. A mighty call upon her life. Jesus, I give you praise. I see a mighty call upon her life. Jesus, I give you praise. God, Lord, I pray tonight that you would put eternity in our hearts, that, Lord, we will fix our eyes upon our champion. I speak over every life right now. Tonight, if you know the Lord has been speaking to you, maybe there's some baggage that you got to get rid of tonight. Maybe you realize that the enemy's lied to you for too long. You may be here tonight and there's sin in your life. And you know you need to be here. Then I'm telling you, the altar's open right now. You can run right now. Jesus is waiting for you. I'm speaking to those that feel rejected, those that you may have come from a broken home and you, you've lived with it all your life. Let go of the baggage. Jesus is here right now. Fix your eyes on Him. Right now, if you don't know where you spend eternity, if you don't know Jesus, if you're backslidden, come out of your row, come out of your seat. your hands right now. Holy Spirit, I speak over every life right now. Call those, Lord. Draw those that tonight they may be free. Free to run with fire. Free to run the race that is set before them. In Jesus' name, Every lie of the enemy, every lie of 
that's answered this call, just lift your hands to Jesus. We're going to pray this prayer together. And I feel like the glory of God is about to fall in a mighty way. But I'm telling you tonight in Jesus' name, I preach what the Holy Spirit wanted me to preach. Because you're going to leave this conference free. Free! Pray this with me. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life, all that I am. I lay at your feet, Lord. I am yours. Wash me in your precious blood. Wash me in your precious blood. I am a child of God. I am redeemed. I am a, an heir of salvation. Every lie every curse all the baggage of the enemy i let go i cast it off i throw it down it is not my identity my identity is christ i am the victor i am an heir of salvation I will run with fire. Jesus, I fix my eyes on you. Use me, fill me, anoint me with fire. Lord, put eternity in my heart. Make me a soul winner. Make me a witness of your glory. So tonight, I denounce every accusation, every offense, every lie of the devil. Tonight, I am free in Jesus' name. Every addiction, every habit is broken right now, generationally. It is broken. The blood is over my life. Every accusation has no power over me. I will run my race in the name of Jesus. Now give God a mighty shout of praise. Oh, I want more Jesus! One more time. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. Come on, lift your hands right now and just worship for a minute.
let your glory fill this place. Fire, 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 fire. Bring them right now, bring them right here. Lift your hands all over this place right now. Lord, I pray. Let mantles fall. Lord, I pray. Let the fire of God burn in this place. There's glory on you right now. There's glory on you right now. Fire. Jesus, There's glory, there's glory, there's glory. Let's go. Fire!
Ushers, help me, help me. In the name of Jesus right now, 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 I break it now, I break it, I break it, I break it, I break it over your life, now, in the name of Jesus.
sing it, brother. Sing it. Lift your hands all over the
I pray the same fire that fell on me would fall on this young man. That Lord, he will never leave the path. He will never turn his back. And he will never turn his face. But Lord, on this stage tonight, he would die. He would die that you may live through him. Use him in a mighty way. Greater glory, Lord. Greater glory. Greater glory. Lord, I pray that you would use her anointing like a spear, like an arrow. The Lord, she would know how to break through darkness. The Lord, she will lead an army of praise. That it would be an anthem that the devil fears and trembles. Somebody's been healed right now. Somebody's been healed in your esophagus. Like, it's like even if you eat something, it can get stuck like you're going to choke. But God is healing that right now. Where is that person? Somebody's been healed right now. Huh? Okay, bring them, bring them, bring them. I wake up at night and I have these horrible attacks. No way to explain it. You can't get air. It's, just, it's awful. Pick him up. Pick him up. whether somebody's watching or somebody's here but you used to have a growth on your spine you had that removed but there's complications in your body God is healing that right now somebody's been healed you know who I'm speaking to Okay, help her, help her.
If you're addicted to painkillers, pain medication, just lift your hand right now. Don't be embarrassed. Don't miss the moment. This is not a night where people are pointing the finger. It's a night where the devil loses. If you're addicted to painkillers, pain medication, lift your hand right now. Free. Now! Now! Ushers, help me if they're coming. Help me. Come here, my precious brother. Help my brother here. this pain I break the trauma of it right now Lord I pray any dependency set him free Lord set him free off like a like the river in Ezekiel and then it comes to your knees and then before you know it it becomes a deluge of his glory miracles just happen You're going to leave this place carrying fire. Holy fire. I said you're going to leave this place carrying holy fire. Run!
I feel glory all over this place right now.
There's such a sweet anointing in this play. Yeah, play it clear. Yes, yes. Jesus.
before we leave tonight, if you can just find some, someone, I just want us to speak a blessing over each other. Before we leave in, in this anointing, if we can do that. I just want you to pray a blessing over someone. Just speak words of life. That they would carry the deposit. That they would safeguard what God released in this place tonight. Yes, pronounce a blessing. We 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 declare manifest. Have you? Yes, speak life over someone. Speak life. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Spirit of the Lord, have your way, have your way, have your way. upon us, Jesus. Blow over us. Want to move with you. Want to be in sync with you, Lord. Want to be in your will. Want to be with you. Breathe over us, breathe upon us, have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way. Yes, Lord, yes. Jesus. Jesus. Thirty more seconds. Yes.
This is revival in this place. <laughs> Jesus. Whoa, thank you, Lord. Precious than silver, Lord, you are more costly than gold, Lord. More beautiful than lies. Nothing I desire compares to you.
Nothing I desire compares to you. Nothing I desire. Nothing I desire. Nothing I desire compares with you. Nothing I desire. Nothing I desire. Even comes close, nothing I desire. Compares with you. Compares with you. And I lift my voice to worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy.
Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Your love, Lord, and I lift my To worship you, oh my soul, rejoice. 